What drew me to soap operas is that I grew up watching soap operas. My family would tell us stories about, you know, my great grandmother and great aunt sitting around the radio, like listening to God and Life. The Guiding Light. God and Light was a soap opera that came on the radio, 1937. And so it made its transition to television in the 50s. I'm making a little bonnet. Gee, that's neat. Blues for a boy, you know. You have pink and blue. Are you expecting twins? <laughs> no. So it was a soap opera that, as it transitioned and moved through generations, the same thing happened within my family. And now, Guiding Light. We were dying for boredom. Even my father watched General Hospital. I didn't always like to go to his house because I would have to watch God and Light during the commercial breaks. <laughs> the adults were so excited. They could be having a conversation about people in the community, maybe gossiping, and then all of a sudden they would, in the same breaths, they would turn the gossip to gossiping about the soap opera. And so sometimes you would get confused. They switch the conversation like, oh, what did such and such up to today? Oh, child, she did such and such, and child, he did such and such, and child, you know what's going to happen. Child, now watch, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. But they talked about it and discussed it the same way they talked about real life people. So, of course, if you want to be in on the gossip, <laughs> you sort of tune into television to see what all the hoopla and all the fuss is about. So soap operas were always on the TV. So it was just something I picked up on, but for me, it sort of it inspired me to want to act. What are you talking about, Justin? What am I talking about? These test results here. I, I do not have to explain my test results here. I started writing little soap operas, you know, skits and plays. The video camera was becoming very popular. A couple of my cousins had a video camera that their parents had brought them, so we would use those cameras and make up our little stories. And by the time I got in high school, I was using one of my cousin's cameras so much that they just gave it to me. It's like you could just have it. Get out of my house! Get the step in I don't want to get out of your house! You cannot make this me leave! I don't care! You're going to talk to me? Oh, you can leave. Towards the end of my undergrad, which was 99, 2000, I started producing this student soap opera. I figured I was gonna make something that me, my family, and friends could understand. And so, I started doing all these voices in the southern dialect that was specific to my hometown. What's up, Johnny? What's up? You know who this is? Yeah. Who? Nina. Nina who? In 2002, I began developing a video series called Conversations with the Children. I was just discovering Warhol and then I saw some of John Waters' earlier films like Desperate Living and Polyester. Oh, Mr. Kirk, I am as upset as you to learn of Dexter's truancy, but surely expulsion is not the answer. I'm afraid expulsion is the only answer. No! Get It was sort of sketch comedy. I would cast my friends to my voice, so they would all be lip syncing to my voice, and I would always like play one role. I was just checking. You going to the club? Yeah, me and my boy going to ride out there. Who is your boy? I was basically in my bedroom, lip syncing, with the camera on and a television monitor, like sitting there. You know, by myself, because in the beginning, a lot of the dialogue, because it felt so heavy and it was straight from my heart, and not everything I was comfortable saying in front of people, that I would often be by myself. And I was, like, finding my voice through this work. So I was looking at soap opera, sitcom, pop culture, my childhood, dreams of the future. I started sticking characters in that wouldn't be on the soap opera but they were still archetypes, or they could be seen as stereotypes in the African-American community. Hello, Braswell residence, Northerly speaking. Mama, this is McQuaid. You wouldn't got them chairs yet? I'm going. I was calling to see if you was gonna come to the memorial service I'm planning for JoJo. No, I won't come. Now you go pick up them badass chairs of yarn. Hello. Hey, child. Some of the characters, Taiwan, I thought you were gonna be he was a gay child. You didn't have that many gays. I don't think queer as folk had fully pumped the fruitation at that time. And so I was 
thinking as a gay child in the family, always being quiet, not having a voice, you know, just sort of not seeing that you don't share your experiences. Hello. What is this I hear about you at some college, lip singing, ringing your behind, half naked? I ain't raised you to be that way, Taiwan. Mama. Don't mama me. Now, I accepted you being gay, but that don't mean you got to flaunt it for the whole damn world. Mama, how you gonna say that? Say what, Taiwan? You embarrassing me and the whole family. He was real hung. He wanted to free. I made him a soul singer, so giving him a voice as a singer, and I eventually took the character out of the video and started performing him live. So I sent the work off to film festivals and it didn't get in, but the art world took the work as it was. Like, it didn't need to be remade. So they took all my children and next thing you know, it was in the art gallery. And so I get a review in the New York Times. So an art career takes off, to my surprise. Put this on. But I don't even know anything about you. Secrets of life? Take what you want, when you want it. I just did not think I would end up on a soap opera. I thought the world was just too far out there. General Hospital. So James Franco was in one of my lectures at Columbia, and he had just started General Hospital. And I guess he said to himself, like, oh, you know, I ask her to be on. I'd like to offer you this $10,000 if you'll book a very special performance that I ever present. He's a performance artist. It'd be for one night only. I started jumping up and down like running through my apartment, just like, so happy, like, oh my fucking gosh, I'm gonna be on General Hospital, this is not happening, wow. The one and only, Caleb Ishmael. <laughs> well, if you ever plan to mow the west, travel my way, my character was a version of my work. That's basically what they did. I need one more performance from you. This time, I get to pick the song. <laughs> All right. It should be sad. Sad and hot. Just tell me when and where. You know the problem with most performance art? It doesn't go far enough. You and me, we're gonna raise the dead. We discussed like not being able to show my legs because it might have been too much, you know, for the audience. The leotard, you know, so they gave me like a long because of like the package, my package, and like, you know, that stuff like all hanging out on daytime television, which I totally understood. So it wasn't like this, but just like, how far to the line can we go without crossing it? Thank you very, very much. I've been asked to perform a very special number. No expression. No expression. Everyone in my family knew that as a child it was something I wanted to do. The art world happened unexpectedly. And... My hometown did like three articles, three newspaper articles, because it was just that big of a deal. They threw this big party and gave me like two trophies, because these people, some of them who gave me the video cameras, and had followed me from childhood. No one knew me. No one knew me. And then the. The museum episode, the climax, actually aired on my birthday. And so I was like, I get to sit at home on my birthday and watch myself on General Hospital. Like, it doesn't get better than that. Like, I didn't give a shit if the art world, high art world, thought it was low art. Like, I had set out to do something that I dreamed of doing, but had pretty much forgotten about and just started doing it myself. So I was looking at divine intervention and the gods in the heavens. That's how I was thinking about it. Look, up there. Don't kill me. I know where the baby is. Oh my God. I 
find it kind of funny. I find it, kind I find it so sad. Dreams in which it's a mad world. The best I, ever had. I find it hard to tell you. I think General Hospital is a part of my work. I even show the episodes that I'll end. Like I show all my episodes back to back in in art galleries now, in museums. It's obvious and clear that they base my character and the idea on my character, character of the work that I had built that was based on soap operas themselves. So yeah, I do see it as a part of my work. At one point I thought it was the end. I was like, okay, well, I've done all these soap opera videos. I'm on soap opera, mission accomplished. What's next? Guiding Light shoots its final episode after 72 years. But I'm counseling so many soap operas, you know, they're not invincible. Like people thought, it was something people you literally thought would be on TV forever because it's an ongoing story. But that's not true. <laughs> like nothing really lasts forever.